YouTube, it's Chris. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing fantastic. Finally, we have the Modern Warfare 2022 optimization video. Guys, in this video, I'm going to cover the things that actually matter. None of the placebo stuff to actually get you a few more frames and lower input lag. Unfortunately, this game is super, super hardware heavy, but there are a few things you can do in this video. I'm going to cover all the topics that actually matter. I'm going to be covering graphics Strava, XMP, DOCP, EOCP. I'm going to be covering my optimization pack as far as graphics card overclocking, CPU overclocking, and memory overclocking. I'm going to be covering my Windows 10 optimization fast track video and the things that matter in your Windows. I'm going to be covering hardware because this game is really hardware heavy. If you do do everything in this video and you consider, hey, maybe I need a little bit more hardware because I want a few more frames out of the game, I'll be, I've got you there. I'll be covering you there. And also, I'll be covering um, hardware unbox, done a bit of a graphics card benchmark for this game. We'll be covering in-depth config. There's a couple extra things we can do in the config to get a few more frames. And I'll also be covering NVIDIA profile and inspector to do a little trick to get a few more frames out of the game. So let's get started, guys. Let's talk about graphics driver. All right, regarding graphics driver. Now, for your video guys, there are two official drivers out right now, 522.25 and 526.47. Do not go on the latest one, which is 526.47. Horrible stutters and horrible visual issues in games. Okay, 522.25 is the recommended for this game, which runs really good for most people. If you are feeling lucky, there is a hotfix driver that came out for this game. Links are in the description here. It is 526.61. I got a nice frame gain with it, and it runs completely smooth for me. Same with a bunch of other people, but then a bunch of other people are getting micro stutters and horrible issues. So if you are feeling lucky, go on 526.61 with a hotfix driver. But if you're not and you don't want to have any headache, go on 522.25. Now, if you do go on the new driver, like the hotfix driver and you have issues, just roll back to 522.25 till we get an official um, actual WHQL driver for this game. I don't know why it hasn't come out yet. It's a bit ridiculous. But anyway, I've had luck with the hotfix driver. It's been nice. I've got an extra 20 frames in 4K, which is pretty insane. Anyway, let's go to AMD drivers, guys. This is where I really need to talk to you guys because AMD drivers are real hit and miss. Okay, the WHQL driver, which is 522.5.1, is a really good all-rounder and it works for everything, but it doesn't run as well for this game. The new driver, 22.10.3, actually has optimizations for Modern Warfare 2. But the issue with this new driver is it causes issues with a whole bunch of programs and older games. So it can get really frustrating there. If you're playing the old Warzone and you're switching back and forth, you may have issues in 22.10.3. But if you only play Modern Warfare 2, just go on this driver here, 22.10.3. But if you play older games and you're having issues, you're going to have to roll back, especially with programs like my video rendering, rendering program actually completely bugged out and would render everything blue. 22.5.1, very, very annoying to be on AMD right now regarding with drivers and, and things like that. Maybe when the AMD come out with the WHQL driver that actually, you know, is after this, maybe it'll be fine, but see how we go. All right, I need to talk to you guys about XMP, EOC, and DOCP. Uh, if you don't have a pre-build, like, you know, one of those really cheap pre-builds or a laptop, you need to go into your BIOS and you need to enable this. This is going to put your RAM speeds in advertised speeds, not in sleep mode, and it's going to make a huge gain difference. Now, if you're not into optimizing and tweaking stuff like that, you at least need to do this. Okay, so I'm mentioning it here in this video. Links are on the description for this stuff. If you want even more out of your system, I have an optimization playlist here. Okay, I cover GPU overclocking, CPU overclocking, memory overclocking, and also memory and CPU overclocking uh, for AMD. So as you can see here, if you want more out of your system, these are the things that you're really going to have to do if you're not willing to upgrade hardware and you want to make the most out of what you have now. Those are the things that I'd really recommend covering. Now, as far as optimization and doing all the Windows stuff, if you don't want to reinstall, just follow one of these ones. But if you want to reinstall and have everything fast tracked and, and spoon fed to you, which is, just makes life so much easier, I have made fast track. So I've got a Windows 11 fast track and a Windows 10 fast track video, which has everything included. So Windows stuff doesn't matter so much, but there's a couple of things you can do in there that really, really help. Um, off the top of my head, power plan, timer resolution, minimal background tasks, and just things set up correctly. The fast track will take care of that for you. So if you're willing to do a fresh install, which I'd highly recommend, try the fast track. But if you're not, you could just go ahead and go the one of these optimization packs where you manually go through and do everything and clean up your current windows. Now I have a video called your wallet lighter. Okay, and I haven't updated with the new CPUs, but I've worked on a lot of high-end systems since this game has come out. 
Worked in a bunch of 3900Ks with 4090s. I worked a bunch of 7950Xs with 4090s and 5800X3Ds with 4090s. And I can I can safely recommend some hardware. So if you've done everything that you have in this video um, and you're still not getting enough uh, and you're looking at upgrading maybe some parts in your current PC or making a whole new PC build, I have upgraded the PC Parks uh, Picker that actually goes with this video. Um, and I'll quickly show you it here. Okay, so PC Park bit picker i've got some budget builds here that i'd still stand by and recommend and i've got best pc build without being stupid with the 13900k and best pc build with the 5800x 3d without being stupid honestly it's the 5950x uh, the 7950x is kind of like a bit of a weird one um it's not as good the best gaming chip right now is the 13900k you, you can't beat it but versus a 5800x 3d which is on the old platform with a 3d cache we're only arguing over like 10 or 20 frames here so there's a couple options here now if the 4090 is too expensive like this is just to show you guys if maybe you want to upgrade some parts and keep some of your parts or do a whole new build if the 4090 is way too expensive with you that is fine you have other options out there you could go get a used 6900 xt or you could go get a used 3080 or 3080 ti that would kind of be my recommendation go out and get if you need really really need uh, you're using dlss that's not enough or lower res resolution it's not enough you need a bit of card if the 4090 is way too much for you go out and get it used 3080 or 3080 Ti. Um, that would be my recommendation for now. It might be worth holding off. AMD just released their new graphics cards and so prices should change fairly soon. Now I'll mention hardware unbox as far as graphics card. Now in the ground war modes, okay, and Warzone when it comes out, it's gonna be more about actually your CPU and RAM. Uh, this is sort of for multiplayer so you can kind of see how things scale here now if you guys are curious on my 4090 i'm getting what was it in the benchmark i was getting like a 475 480 with the 4090 um everything absolutely tuned um and probably I'll, a couple more in 1080 i haven't tested it and then in 4k i'm getting about 310 so as you can see here these are the benchmarks of how the cards kind of perform so if you are looking upgrading card uh i'd probably just do everything in this video and then wait it out for the new amd cards to come out and see if pricing changes and if the 4090 is just way out of your reach just go and look and getting like a, a, a use 3080 or 3080 ti or something like that honestly or if you don't mind dealing with amd graphics driver issues you could go a 6900 xt on the used market there's options there but anyway hopefully that can point you guys in the right direction all right so we've got a google drive uh game configs uh location so the links in the description go ahead and download modern warfare 2 optimization guide zip okay i've got that ready to go here and another thing i'll mention is nv and profile inspector there's a little trick we can do here to force resize bar but it's still actually this will only work on if you have got an nvidia card but it still uh works on non-resize bar systems which is really weird so i actually don't think it's resize bar but everyone's getting a nice frame boost i've got a bunch of people in my discord i've got them to test my config and I've got them to test the NV Inspector and everyone's got a nice frame boost by doing so. So those are the things to follow. Links are in the description. The config, just go ahead and download it and extract it. And once we've extracted it, okay, go ahead and open the folder. All right, I've already got NV and Profile Inspector here for you and you can open up the photo. And these are the things we need to change. Select Modern Warfare 2, select this one, select this one at that, select that one at that, and then click apply. I'll quickly show you guys here. I'm opening NVIDIA Profile Inspector. Up the top here, but call, and down the bottom it should say Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Now I've globally applied it here for me because I only played 2019 and then this game. There's a nice little frame boost in 2019 with doing this too. Okay, once you've selected Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, there's a little cogwheel here. I want you to click, which is show unknown settings from NVIDIA predefined profiles. Click on that. Okay, you'll get a whole bunch of extra settings. Scroll down and we need to look for BA, BB, and FF. Go ahead and select those to that. Okay, like in the photo and then click apply. That's all you need to do. Okay, I've globally set it so I don't need to show you, but it will look kind of uh, black like that. So apply that, select that, select that, select that, and then click apply. You're gonna have to redo this after every graphics driver install. It's annoying, it resets, so you're gonna have to redo it. In the config, we can set a couple of things lower than actually in the game. Now this video, originally I wanted to benchmark and, and stress test and test for latency 1% 0 0.1 Z frames every single individual graphics setting but because this game is so hardware heavy and a lot of the settings don't do a huge huge thing I just didn't bother I just don't see the point because of how hardware heavy this game is. it's actually a joke how hardware heavy this game is but it is what it is here's a convict here I've got it set it up perfectly where you're going to be able to transport it across for you without having any issues at all 
Now, I'm going to cover a few of the extra things in this config that you can do that'll help, all right, that don't let you change in game. Async compute is true by default, setting it to false gave a quite nice frame boost. Tested this on a whole bunch of different systems, like I said in Discord, got a whole bunch of guys to do that. But everything should be set in here. Now, I've set some things blank because you guys are going to have a different, like, um, you know, resolution. You guys are going to have a different refresh rate, but yeah. So most of the stuff should be done in here for you. You can just transplant this file into your folder and everything will be done for you. Now, like I said, there's a couple of extra things. I think there's about five extra things in here. Like here's one of them and here's one of them that you could set things lower than you could actually set in the game. Now for guys that are actually into tweaking configs, I will mention two things in here um, in this config that you don't want to change. Filmic visual noise filter. Don't set this to zero. It's going to make the game look worse. This game has a horrible issue where the actual shadows on the character models and some of the walls are actually blotchy, all right? If you set it to zero, it's 10 times worse. It doesn't affect frames at all. Leave this at one. Another thing I'll mention for people that like, uh, you know, mucking around with configs, the anisotropic filtering setting, do not set this to nearest, okay? Just, I've got it set to linear here in the config for the max frames. If you set this to nearest, you'll get the horrible, 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 like a uh, little uh, Minecraft looking textures and it's impossible to shoot at people and see people. So I thought I'd mention that here. Everything's gonna cover it in here for you guys to get you guys going to be able to transfer it across. Transplant it across, uh, across. I'm going to mention some things here. Uh, render work account. Now, let the game set this to automatic by default. That's why I've left it blank here because everyone has a different CPU. Go ahead and run the benchmark, then come back in here and play with it. Okay. There is no actual value that's going to work all around. It's a very weird one. It's not like Modern Warfare 2019, but you'd set it to half your cores. You go to task manager, you go to performance, you go to CPU. Look at your cores. I've got eight. I'd set it to four in 2019 in Warzone. I'd get a nice frame boost and the game would run smoother on four. It's not like that here. My best result is seven, which was default. Got a lot of bunch of people to test this value. It seems sort of weird. Values you want to try is half your cores, all your cores, all your threads. Try that. But it seems like 80 to 90% of your cores seems to be the sweet spot. I actually got better on the default value. If you don't want a headache, just leave it at default. Video memory scale is a really interesting one. Let the game set it to default. The default was 85% um, for me. Now, if some of you guys have a really lower end graphics card that's maybe only got two gig or three gig of video memory, you might benefit from setting this to lower to like uh, 0 0.55. You can actually do this in the game. Set it to like 50% or 60%. It's worth trying if you have a video card with really low video memory. Okay, so I thought I'd mention that here. But anyway, what I want you guys to do is grab this, okay? Copy it and then go into your documents folder, Call of Duty folder, plays folder, and you can paste it in here. Now, before you do it, if you want to back up yours, you can go back up yours, just drag it to the desktop. But I just want you to go ahead and paste it in here. All right. Now let's go open the game and I'll cover the game settings. All right. In the game, let's go to the settings. Just so I'll mention here, the benchmarks are your best friend. You need to test your call render work account. Okay. Have a bit of muck around with that. All right, make sure you benchmark it first before you test different values and keep note of what the default value is. You could delete that little line in the config and it will just remake it. Now with the graphics tab, I will mention with the config, it's quite nice. As you can see, some things are blank here. All right, and that's because we've set it lower in the config than what the game like, set in the game. If you change settings in here, just one or two and apply, it's not going to reset the other settings in the config like some games do, which is really, really nice. So there's no need to set the config to read only. It's really, really handy. But anyway, so we'll go to display here. Make sure you go ahead and set your um, refresh rate and resolution to your default, okay? Make sure you're always in exclusive full screen because there's less latency and more frames in full screen exclusive. I don't care if you like alt tabbing, deal with it. Go full screen exclusive, please. Now for you guys that have lower end graphics cards and are really GPU bottlenecked by the GPU uh, benchmark, uh, you can try dynamic resolution for guys that have 2000 series cards and under. That's it's a nice thing to try. Turn it on, set it to the absolute max target on the benchmark and then start lowering it and lower it to a value until you start losing frames. And just before you start losing frames, that is the sweet spot, the best visual clarity and also frames. It's worth trying out. Also, we have other scaling techniques. So for you guys that are GPU starved, you could lower your actual resolution, which I wouldn't bother doing because we have a render resolution slider here. So you could lower that to get a few more frames out of the game. Or you could try some of these um, upscaling technologies like the Intel one, which is kind of 
dog water, I wouldn't bother. NVIDIA DLSS image scaling and AMD FSI. You can try these with the benchmark, okay? All it is, is it'll set a lower resolution. So if I set this to balanced, I'm on 4K. I set it to balanced. It does 1440p upscale to 4K with an algorithm to look a little bit clearer and adds a sharpening as well. And there's a little sharpening adjustment slider. If it's not frames you're after and if it's actually just visual uh, clarity and quality and you can't stand the force anti-aliasing blur, this is a lifesaver uh, Fidelity FX CAS. Go ahead and set this and find a value that you like with this sharpening. This has a small penalty on FPS. That's why it's off in the config but it's kind of a must if you want to be able to spot out enemies from a distance. So I'd recommend anywhere between um, 50 to 80 if you've got good eyes and 100 if you've got really bad eyes like me. Okay, um, anti-aliasing quality. The lowest setting is going to be the clearest, but the filmic setting gets rid of that horrible uh, shadow blotchy-ness uh, that I was talking about. So it's, it's kind of annoying, but I just deal with the lowest setting. Um, quality doesn't help fix that at all either. Okay, now everything's set absolutely bare low for you to get the absolute most frames out of the system. But if you want your game to look a little bit better and you don't mind an FPS penalty, I'd recommend cranking up your texture resolution and cranking up anisotropic um, filtering. And if you don't mind the game using your uh, network and hardware drive space for slightly better textures, and you want to default to downloaded ones rather than just using the default ones that come with the game, you could turn on-demand texture streaming on. But personally, the only thing that actually helps for me, all right, and even I've tested this on 1080p, 1440p, 4K, cranking up the texture resolution, cranking up the anisotropic filtering, and adding a sharpening filter, which is Fidelity CAS, okay? Those are the only things that help. Everything else in the game is literal visual noise and visual clutter that is not going to help you one bit in the game. All right, so I think a couple of other things I'll mention in here. Um, I want you guys to play around with the video memory scale. If you guys have a lower end graphics card, like I mentioned, which is maybe only got two gig or, or three gig of VRAM, you better see how much VRAM you have here. Okay, so that's worth a shot playing around with. Now, nothing really else to cover here. I will mention there's always a bug in this uh, engine. When you set it to the max field of view, the visual quality kind of goes down. So if that annoys you, 115 and under is fine. I'll also recommend going to account network and disabling dismemberment and gore effects for a few more frames out of the system. That's really all there is to cover. Unfortunately, the game is super hardware heavy and it is what it is. But in this video, I've kind of covered all of that and the things that matter, especially if you want to look at upgrading some stuff or even just do this to get the most out of your system. Guys are streaming this game over Twitch. Come say hi. Have an optimization server over on Twitter if you want me to do all the overclocking and Windows install stuff for you. I recommend going and checking that out. Please give this video a like, subscribe to the channel. I do have a gaming channel. Links are in the description. I'll be doing a movement guide on this game and I do upload gameplay videos on that. Take it easy, guys. Good luck with this game.